हेलो एवरीवन आप सभी का फिर से एक बार स्वागत है मेरे यूट्यूब चैनल में जिसका नाम है कॉमर्स ट्रेजर इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट के यू डी एम कॉम फर्स्ट सेमेस्टर मार्केटिंग मैनेजमेंट 2019 थाउजेंड नाइनटीन टू मार्क्स क्वेश्चन आई हैव ऑलरेडी मेड अ वीडियो ऑन फाइनेंशियल मैनेजमेंट एज वेल एज अदर सब्जेक्ट्स ऑफ टू क्वेश्चन पेपर इफ यू हैव नॉट सीन दोज वीडियोज आई एम पुटिंग द लिंक इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन एंड ऑल्सो इन द आई बटन डू वॉच दैट वीडियो एंड विदाउट वेस्टिंग मच टाइम let us go to the 10 questions of marketing management the first question is define marketing so according to kotler and armstrong marketing is a social and managerial process by which individual and groups obtain what they need through creating and exchanging products and value with others so according to these two authors marketing is a process which type of process social as well as managerial process so where individual or group of people they obtain what they want by giving something in return which is of value to the another party so this is what is called as marketing one more definition of marketing according to american marketing association marketing is the activity set of institution and processes for creating communicating delivering and exchanging offerings that have value for customers clients partners and society at large so in marketing what you do you first create a market offering you create a product then you communicate about that product you promote the product and you exchange you sell that product to the customers client partners or society whoever requires and this process is called as marketing the next question is what is target market a target market is focusing on a particular class of customer that is actual or potential customers it is a particular need or want which might be willing and able to engage in the exchange to satisfy needs and wants a target market is a specific defined segment of consumer that company plans to serve with its product or service so in the whole market if you are selecting a small segment or if you are selecting a particular area then that is called as target market let us take an example think that this is a big market and it has different different segments you can segment the market you can divide the market based on uh, geographical demographical or psychological segmentations and if you plan to select a specific segment or if you target a specific segment then this is called as target market for example now horlicks is a company which produces milk powder now out of the total market they segmented and selected a specific target that is women's and therefore we can say that women's horlicks is nothing but it is an example of target market what do you mean by customer perceived value customer perceived value is the notion that the success of the product or service is largely based on whether consumers believe it can satisfy their wants and needs now what this means customer perceived value is nothing but what customer thinks about your product this is what they are trying to say whether he is going to satisfy with the help of your product is what a customer perceives or is what the customer thinks customer perceived value is evaluated value that a customer perceives to obtain by buying a product or owning a product it is a difference between the total benefits obtained as per the customer's perception and the cost that he has to pay for that so it is nothing but whatever cost the customer is paying for purchasing that product or owning that product and whatever he receives whatever benefits he gets the difference of this is called as value so we can say that customer perceived value is seen in terms of satisfaction of the needs a product or service can offer to a potential customer so any of the one you can remember and write the next question is define consumer behavior consumer behavior is a study of how individual customers groups or organization select buy use and dispose ideas goods and services to satisfy their needs and wants so very simple it is a study you are studying studying what behavior of individual customers group of customers or organizations 
who buy, who use, who select and dispose your products, goods or services. Why they do this? To satisfy their needs or wants. So according to Bitta, consumer behavior is the decision process and physical activity which individual engage in when evaluating, acquiring, using and disposing of goods and services. So similar to what we have seen in the meaning. One more definition, according to Angel, Blackwell and Mansard, consumer behavior is the action and decision process of people who purchase goods and services for personal consumption. So it is nothing but it is the action and decision process of a person or of an individual who is planning to purchase a goods or service for their personal consumption. So it has different steps. He starts with thinking about the product. He goes through selecting different alternatives, evaluating different alternatives, and then he finally purchases the particular product. So studying of all those behaviors is called as consumer behavior. The next question is state the importance of labeling. Labeling is nothing but on a product whenever you see the detailed description of what is there in the product that is called as labeling. So let us see the importance of labeling. First one, easy recognition of a product. So whenever there is a labeling, you can easily use it for identification. You can get to know what is there in the packet and what it contains. Second, it facilitates product comparison. So based on labeling, you can compare different different products. You can compare their price, their weight, their quality and all other aspects. Differentiates product. So labeling also help a company to differentiate their product from the competitor's products. The company can differentiate their product based on writing about what is the USP that is unique selling proposition of the company. Next is it helps to spread awareness among the consumers about the items they are consuming. So because of labeling, you can understand how to make a particular product or how to prepare a particular item and what is there in that particular product. Labeling protects the consumer from any cheating or manipulation of facts by the manufacturer. Very simple. It helps or it prevents the manufacturer from cheating and manipulation. It facilitates promotion of products. It is a requirement by law. So as you know, as per the Indian legal system, on every packed item, there must be a label which should include what it contains, its MRP, its weight, its production, location, name, address, and all these things. It helps the people to learn about products, features, and quality without even using it. So without using the product, you can understand how the product is with the help of labeling. So these are all some simple points on importance of labeling. The next question is, what is brand equity? Brand equity is the positive differential effect that knowing the brand name has on consumer response to the product or services. A brand with strong brand equity is a valuable asset. So brand equity is nothing but it is the positive effect which a consumer has because he knows the name of your brand. So it is nothing but it is the goodwill of that particular brand. A brand which has a good brand equity, it is always a valuable asset of that particular company. The best example of brand equity is iPhones. So whenever we talk about good range phones, the first name which comes to our mind is Apple or iPhone. So this is what is called as brand equity. It differentiates that particular product. Brand equity refers to a value premium that company generates from a product with a recognizable name when compared to generic equivalent. Companies can create brand equity for their product by making them memorable, easily recognizable and superior in quality and reliability. So nowadays it is all about brands. Whenever you select or whenever you want to buy a particular item, we just go by brands when we talk about Cars, we all know about branded cars. When we talk about watches, all of us know about branded watches or goggles. So this is what the impact of brand is in today's competitive world. The next question is, what is differentiated pricing? So the name itself says that in a differentiated pricing, the price of the same product is set differently based on customers, location, product form, etc. 
so whenever you charge different price for the same product to different customers this is called as differentiated pricing a pricing strategy in which a company sets different prices for the same product on the basis of different customer type time of purchase etc is called as differentiated pricing it is also called as discriminatory pricing flexible pricing multiple pricing variable pricing etc so the best example for differentiated pricing will be in a movie theater there are different different types of ticket which you can take so you can take dress circle you can take balcony ticket so for the same picture you are paying different amount because of the location then this is called as differentiated pricing sometimes on sundays you have to pay higher price for morning shows you have to pay lower price so this is based on timing sometimes based on age for a small child he has to pay lesser amount for an adult he has to pay more amount so these are all called as differentiated pricing your product is going to be same but the price is going to be charged differently the next question is how online marketing is different from offline marketing so this is a very general question so let us see in online marketing seller make use of internet to sell the products whereas in offline marketing the customer has to visit the marketplace to buy the products so very simple in offline you have to go to shop purchase the product in online it is everything on internet online marketing is cheaper and saves a lot of time when compared to offline marketing so in offline marketing you have to go to shop and usually it is going to be a time consuming process as well as the goods there will be of a higher price compared to the online marketing because it may reduce the mediators or intermediaries the next point is the reach of online marketing is more compared to offline marketing so if there is offline marketing you can reach only to a limited number of persons but online marketing sitting in india or the manufacturer being in india he can sell to all over the world the last point is modern methods of marketing are used in online marketing whereas the traditional methods are used in offline marketing the next question is differentiate between advertising and sales promotion so promotion mix has different different methods or techniques of promotion which includes advertisement sales promotions personal selling public relation etc so let us see difference between advertising and sales promotion so advertising is usually long term promotional strategy whereas sales promotion is a short term promotional strategy for a limited period so whenever you see advertisement or whenever the company sponsors advertisement it is for a long period of time but sales promotion offers will be for a short period of time in advertising a reason is offered to buy whereas in sales promotion incentive is offered to buy so this means that in advertisement you get a message why you should buy that particular product what are the benefits of that product how the product is going to suit you but when we talk about sales promotion it is nothing but it is an incentive for you to buy if you buy that product you may get 5% discount you may get a free gift you may get a free trip etc the next point is the aim of advertisement is to attract the ultimate consumers whereas the aim of sales promotion is to attract not only consumers but also retailers wholesalers and sales persons so advertisement is more for the end consumers or the last consumers but sales promotion may be for customers it may be for retailers it may be for wholesalers it may be for any middlemen and the last point is advertisement is highly expensive whereas sales promotion is comparably less expensive so these are the difference between advertisement and sales promotion the last question of this paper is define marketing plan so according to kotler and keller a marketing plan documents how a business strategic objective can be achieved through a specific marketing activities with the customer being the focal point so in a marketing plan you find out or you frame objectives to satisfy your customer needs to fulfill the customer demands making them the main point or the focal point you design all the marketing 
activities. Let us see one more meaning of marketing plan. A marketing plan is the advertising strategy that a business will implement to sell its product or service. It is a strategy to sell the products or service. So let us see what it does. The marketing plan will help to determine who the target market is, how best you can reach them, at what price you have to sell that particular product or service and how the company will measure its efforts. So it covers all the important areas of marketing. So before you actually go into that area, you have to plan, which is called as marketing plan. So it includes targeting a market, finding out the correct market, fixing the correct price, selling the correct product, how you have to reach them, everything is going to be included in marketing plan. So this is all about the marketing management paper. If you have any doubts, you can comment me in the comment box. If you like the video, please hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed my channel yet, please subscribe my channel and also press the bell icon so that you can get a notification as soon as I upload a new video. Thank you for watching this video and we shall meet again with another video.